Hey everybody, Bam Collectibles here to showcase to you probably the best Sasuke statue that will ever be created. I pre this statue probably like two years ago, at least what it feels like, so I'm so happy it's safe in home and the production turned out incredible. We are on the road to 200,000 subscribers, unbelievable. And in order to celebrate that milestone, I have an incredible statue I'll be showcasing. And throughout today's video, I'm gonna be teasing small parts about what you can maybe look forward to and see. Be sure to stick around to the very end to see the final teaser as we head toward that amazing milestone. Without delay, let's go ahead and jump on in and take a look at the ultimate Sasuke statue. First off, we have this incredibly beautiful base. On the bottom, we'll see Cartoon World's logo that they use for the company, the big old CW. And then at the very center of the base, we see that Rene Sharingan. I love the purple outline that they have, the trim going all around the base. Then we'll see the final belly head of Madara statue and Hashirama's there. Really cool touch that they added that in there. On the very top, tilting this up, we'll see multiple grooves and notches that were slotted out to fit other pieces in there. And then on the front, there's this tiny little piece here. Uh, this is removable because we have two different poses for Sasuke, and you take this on and install it depending upon which one that you choose to go with the statue. Let me go ahead and just spill the beans. This statue is going to be around three feet tall. And in order to support such a large and heavy statue, you need a strong foundation and backbone to hold things up. And every single tree branch that you see here that we're gonna be installing serves a purpose in supporting some kind of element that's gonna be stacked on top of it later. As you can imagine, with all the cocoons that you saw hanging off that tree branch there, this is a piece of the god tree that they sculpted. Every single one seems to have these little partial cocoons. And again, that kind of round part of the base is not textured because it goes into the bottom. It slots in so it doesn't scrape anything. This little indent here is later where a foot will be resting on top of there. The next branch is the most important part in this entire statue. Casted inside of the branch is a steel rod that goes all throughout the spine, and this is going to be the backbone of the statue. The Sasano itself is going to rest right here on this branch, so a lot of weight is going to be needed to support it. This next branch is going to also be used to support another part of the statue. As you can see, it sticks out a little bit further, so something will be resting right on top of there. This branch serves two different purposes. So we have a thinner rectangular slot on here that's gonna to act to support the foot of the Sasana as we see this one right here. And then the other one is gonna be used as a switch out depending upon which pose that you choose again for the statue. Here are the two interchangeable branches. Basically one is used to rest upon Sasuke's foot for him to lean on. And the other one just kind of gets out of the way as he'll be standing there later. For the first branch right here, you'll see that this is actually going to be out of the way so Sasuke can stand in the center easier. And then if we take this one out and interchangeably add the other one, you'll notice that it kind of goes through the center. That's because Sasuke is going to be more elevated and he's going to use that to support his left foot on this branch right there. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> uh huh? Jumping right into the legs of the Susano, we can see this is extremely vibrantly painted. We have that notch and steel rod that's gonna key into that very important branch that we went over earlier. But I love the paint job that they chose for this. Normally, when they do Susano statues, they are more transparent, clear resin, but I think for this final form, it's good that they chose to paint this section. Now we'll see these notches over here where the armor skirting are going to key into later, but overall it just looks extremely vibrant, awesome. You the way that the colors contrast later, you're gonna love it. You can see again, the backside and foot connect via that notch and steel rod. Now this piece right here, again, we can see the awesome colors they use. And the strange thing about it is there's nothing that actually connects it with like a, a magnet or a rod. Just these notches sit into those grooves that were on the top part of the torso and it just sits into place as you stack different parts on top of it. Let me know in the comments below, do you think that they made the wise decision by choosing to have this painted or should have they maybe have casted it in clear resin? 
If you're newer to the channel, let me tell you, your boy Bam is obsessed with cards and statues and displaying them together. This is a custom version of Sasuke with the uh, Indra version of Susana behind him. Again, a custom card because the normal Naruto CCG cards ended shortly after the, I think it was the Kage Summit arc into the early war arc. So a lot of the cards that came out didn't go past that. So that's a custom card because it wasn't ever made or produced in the mainstream CCG. Crack it open one pack because you know I love opening these up for everybody on the channel. But we'll see. Whoa! Then we have another super rare with Kisame and puppet version of Sasori here. Yo, I don't even have this one either. My list of super rares that I'm missing is getting shorter and shorter, but I'm amazed to be able to pull, you know, new cards. I haven't really pulled many duplicates on the channel since opening some of these packs. We'll plow through the rest of these cards and take a look. But if you're not aware, the Naruto CCG game did end many years ago, but uh, it's really difficult to find unopened packs now, but I love to open them up on the channel ever so often, but really cool to pull another gorgeous super rare card. This piece right here single-handedly blows my mind, not even fully understanding how the heck they casted something so large. I'm not gonna be able to hold it up to the camera, so we're gonna take a look at different shots, one by one, close up. First off, we'll see these little notches on the side here are gonna be for the hands, and then here is the head behind the Susana, really human looking. We don't really get to see this, right? In the show, we got to see it more armored, but this is how they sculpted it to look. Later on, we will be installing nine different Chibaku Tensei with the tailed beasts trapped inside. They're gonna be installed onto this thick kind of line of resin, and then we have a magnet and a notch on the very end. Uh, but again, this resin here is super thick to be able to support everything as we connect them to the ends. I'm not gonna lie, this right here is my favorite camera angle that I shot for throughout the whole video. But taking a look at this back piece, we'll see a magnet on the top left and bottom right, and then we have an effect piece that they sculpted separately. This piece does house all the LED units and also a battery pack cartridge. That's right, they did decide to go with batteries on this one. It's going to be three triple A's that they chose. Now the LEDs you can see on the side right here, here, uh, multiple different parts all throughout that are gonna shine onto those lines with the chakra particles. But I have to admit, I, I hate batteries, all right? I hate them so much. Uh, the acid leaks that happen, you have to replace them. So I use these right here. These are electronic batteries that are shown in some of my statues. Uh, if you have any interest on where to get these, I have a BAM Amazon or BAMazon uh, affiliate links. Uh, you can see below in the description of the video, you can check out where to get these for yourself. So that we're not using batteries. We're using electricity to power this bad boy on. With this secured, we'll go ahead and flip to the front and give you a small preview of what these LEDs are gonna look like in the dark. Yo, how awesome does that look? I'm so stoked to show you how this gets put together. Now this is the mask part, of course, that we're used to seeing that forms around the head of the Susano. This is one of my favorite things about statue unboxing is getting to hold these different parts of the actual characters that we love in a 3D tangible object and getting to see what they look like. And I hope you brought another change of socks because they are about to get blown off as we rev up looking at other parts of the statue. This is his right hand that's sculpted in an hour position. We'll see a hole is kind of screwed or dremeled into the center there. That's for uh, an effect that we're going to be seeing later on. But really cool how they join these together. Again, the steel rods are very important to support the weight over time and be sure that the resin doesn't warp. It's a really cool mixture, right, of the painted and clear resin brought together. And this is the actual Indra's arrow that they sculpted into here. This thing is absolutely crazy. Again, the use of steel rods on the end to secure these, but how incredible does this look, right? All the different colors of the blues, the actual wild nature of the resin, the way that it's forming together to create that arrow. It is just amazing, mind blowing. Uh, words can't really describe how this thing looks. So let's get this installed and take a look. In order to safely do it, I do need to remove the arm and I'll show you kind of where this keys into and slides in. But one of the craziest things about this piece is actually the overall length of it when you put it together. So I'm gonna get this installed onto here and then I'll show you exactly how long it is. I can't remember exactly, so let me grab a ruler and we'll take a look. Crazy cool camera angle as we look down the sights of Indra's arrow and we can see the length of it is exactly perfect for how he was winding up to take that final shot at Naruto. The length of this altogether is right around 
we'll see 16 inches. So we have a foot and a third that it goes out to a foot long. That is so crazy how they did this. Now I did have to remove that arrow in order to safely showcase this. We have the bow that they sculpted just as wild as crazy as the arrow itself. Now again, we have the texturing of the Susana armor that's on there. And then here, this was sculpted in multiple parts. We can see some steel rods in the center. Uh, this piece is really heavy, so really necessary for them to do this. This is why Cartoon World is one of the premier Naruto statue makers. They think long term with the engineering and how things are sculpted to be sure that your statue doesn't warp over time. I love that we have this thin piece of resin here that's acting as the actual bow and then you have the wild lightning looking nature that's sprinkled all throughout it. Here's another cool angle we can see down the sights as he's winding up that arrow. Really cool, crazy. This was actually sculpted as one giant piece as well. Bring the arrow back in and you can see how everything looks all together. Crazy, right? I just, I crazy. I can't even come up with any more creative words to explain how awesome these are. First of the nine tailed beasts captured inside of the Chibaku Tensei is none other than Kokuo or the five tails. They spared no expense on the creativity with each one that they sculpted in here. They're all in different positions and uniquely sculpted. We can see the notch and the grooves that are used. They're going to connect it to the actual chakra stream. Now these look larger by nature, but they're actually pretty lightweight, which is amazing how they again engineered this. So there's not too much weight that's on the statue. Here we have Saiken or the six tails. Now, out of all the tailed beasts, I think this is probably my least favorite. I'm, I'm pretty sure most probably agree. You know, let, let me know in the comments section below what is your least favorite tailed beast and what is your most favorite? What? Ah. Then we have Chome or the Seven Tails. This is one that's like a, a big mystery, right? We didn't really got hardly any screen time with these. That's something about the Tailed Beasts that I wish we almost got separate episodes for is kind of maybe a, a look into their life, their journey, what they dealt with. Uh, this is a part of Naruto that is kind of frustrating. You know, we, we're going into the Boruto manga, but I really wish that we dived deeper into some characters in the show that we never really got to experience. This, The Tailed Beasts are definitely one of those characters I'd love to see more of. Next up, this one needs no introduction, right? Yuki or the Eight Tails, otherwise known as Hachibi. Uh, so this one is sculpted pretty well. They only, this is probably the one where I, I think I wasn't as impressed. The eyes seemed a little off for me. Maybe it's too dark or the white circles around his eyes weren't wide enough. Uh, but overall, still cool though, right? We have all eight tails on there, so it looks good. And then the tailed beast that needs no introduction, our beloved Chroma. I love how they sculpted him to look exactly like Surge Studio uh, Pain, where the hand is outreaching. At least that's what it reminds me of. Really cool looking. Spared no expense here. We have every single tail that is sculpted all throughout there. But this has to be out of the ones that they sculpted throughout this. This is my favorite one that they did. Of course, he's like right at the top, the very center, because he is the most beloved in the series and the strongest. Speaking of strongest, it's not going to be you, Shukaku, right? One tail here incoming. So we have that just one singular long tail that's poking out. Uh, really simple, but they sculpted a lot of his body to be poking out here, which is cool. But I guess his, his body is pretty wide, so it's hard to trap all of that in there in the first place, right? Winding down to our last three tail beasts, we have Sun Goku or four tails coming in. Uh, I love how it kind of looks like he captured him mid charge as he's launching through the air, right? He has that fist still wound back, ready to fight, really captures his personality, at least what I would imagine it to be in the series. As we're putting all this together, I hope you take a moment to appreciate the craziness behind the engineering that Cartoon World did to bring these to life. Isobu or three tails here. Now, again, this is more of a larger of the tailed beast. So most of his body is not captured inside of the Chibaku Sensei, which I can appreciate, right? We get to see more of them in the sculpt. Now you'll notice I installed Isobu before Matatabi or two tails because in order to get this one on, I'm not sure if it's just mine. For some reason, they kind of scrape against each other if I put two tails on before three tails. So I did that first. That's a reason why maybe it's uh, that way for everybody else. But there's a small tip if you own this to be sure to put that one on there maybe first and save yourself. Up next, we have Sasuke, the man of the hour himself. Now this pose right here that you see was not included on the original pre-order. They threw this in for free, which is amazing that they did that. Uh, we can see the steel rod and notch at the very bottom there. The outfit looks great. The holster that we see where, where the sword would go is actually made of real steel, which is awesome. 
I love it so much when they use real materials like that and going upwards, we'll see the Uchiha clan symbol. They did a great job with that. Those are paint stickers that they put on there. And then the rope we can see is kind of flowing and in the wind. And then Sasuke's hand sculpt looks perfect. I believe that is the, the ram hand sign that they have. And the head sculpt, the elephant in the room, let's get it out of here, right? The head sculpt is not perfect. I think that they could have done a better job on the hair. In fact, they could have definitely done a better job at the hair. Something is just completely off. I think it's maybe too full. But something I need to mention is when installing this specific one, maybe this is just for me, the back part of the sword casing hits up against one of the cocoons in the back. And so I had to actually remove it. Thankfully, it did come out for me. I I don't know if it snapped off, but it came out very easily. And so I removed it in order to get him to install it. If I didn't do this, it would have taken off one of those cocoons, which I did not want. I would be curious for anyone who does own this statue. Let me know, did you have that same issue for yours as well? Again, for a freebie that they included, this is an incredible option because we do have a scene accurate version of Sasuke, right? He's extracting all that chakra from the tailed beast. So this is the one you want to go with if you're looking for a scene accurate, you know, version of him, of what he's doing in this moment. What's really cool is they also offered an alternative base. If you're not going to use this pose, you can house him on top of this cool little base that we see on the side here. Now that is just an over the top, amazing option that they gave us. So here is how he looks standing on there. Again, really cool how you can display this on the side. Now the secondary pose unfortunately won't have a secondary base because most of its attachments do go onto one of the tree parts here. So they would have to sculpt on a completely different base with a diorama for you to do this. As you can see, he's in more of a lunging pose. So on the very bottom part, we'll see the notch and the groove with the steel rod that does attach to the actual tree part. That's how he secures himself into place mostly. There's probably a steel rod that travels up to the leg as well. Such a masterful job at the sculpt and the dynamics of the actual outfit itself. You can see all the different wrinkles and the waviness to it. That was so intentional with the actual positioning. This rod here, we'll see the hand is open. He'll be able to have a sword inside of there. And again, the hair, not perfect, but you know, when you take a step back at the statue, really, come on, what's the focus here? Is it actually Sasuke or is it the Susana behind him? So I can deal with that kind of imperfection. Here's the sword, just like the, uh, the sheath that holds it. It is made of real steel. The way that it was painted was fantastic. So I love the fact that it is real steel. The Chidori in the left hand looks incredible. This is probably the best Chidori that I've seen sculpted before. It's amazing how they have all those different streams coming off there. Now with these amazing looking streams, it comes with being extremely fragile. With each piece installed now, you can see that this is a much more artistic and dynamic pose that they went for. This was the one that they offered up on the actual pre-order, but he keys into that tree over there, and then the left foot will rest on top of that branch to support it as well. Now, if you brought your change of socks, you better get them ready because they're about to get blown off. Holy shiitake mushrooms, how incredible does this look? This is an actual dream come true to see this scene brought to life so well and balanced all together. So in the end, we'll see the secondary pose Sasuke. Here's the addition size, picture plaque they have, and my custom card all together. A Naruto companion piece 2D artwork has been teased, and here is it side by side. Cartoon World is gonna knock this out of the park. I look forward to showcasing this in the next one to two years. It's not even up for pre-order yet, but as always, everybody, thank you so much for joining me on today's video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to do so, and I'll see you in the next video. Do what you love and love what you do. Bam out. See you at 200,000 subscribers.